we are gonna start the show. We are ready to go. All right, so ladies, real quick, can you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves real quick? Uh, your name, your possible age. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? And what is your relationship, uh, relationship status? Uh, Nilu, go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Nilam, and uh, my nickname is Nilu, Nilam Sundaram, and I'm in Indiana, not in India. I'm in Indiana, right here in the U.S., <laughs> and I, for the last 15 years, have been a marriage and family therapist, so my, I'm in the business of relationships and sex and uh, keeping people together, helping them part, you know, consciously and peacefully and lovingly, um, and as for my age, I like to say that, like, this is my first lifetime in the US, like, but I think I've lived many, many lifetimes, um, you know, being a Hindu, like, I think I've lived many, many lifetimes in India and Pakistan, and uh, for whatever reason, decided, well, you know, like, as part of my mission, I got came here to the US. And I'm still like, I mean, I know how to like walk around, but I'm still like, this is not my home, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> All right, That's no it. worries. Thank you Immigrant so much. thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Nilu. Also, I, this is the first time we actually have a uh, certified expert in uh, family and relationships, right? That's something I always have to remind people. Look, it's my podcast. I speak on my opinions, and, uh, and I, but I am not an expert. <laughs> but now we have an expert. <laughs> oh, well, that's so kind of you to say. But, you know, there's something about this, right? A lot of, a lot of degrees that are in the social sciences, it, you're, you're just checked. It, it's a checkbox, you know, but really your experience, yes. it comes from within. It's like mm -hmm. a lot of people I know, I've helped a lot of people get their master's degrees in mm -hmm. um, social work and marriage and family mm -hmm. therapy. And it's like, we, we talk about that. You're just getting your things checked off, but you already have what it takes. You just need to prove it by getting mm -hmm. the degree, you know, yep, yep. otherwise yeah. like they're good to go. If, he, if they didn't have to get a degree, they didn't need a degree, kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one thing I would say I'm an expert at is I'm an expert at triggering women. <laughs> that was my content. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> I can be real. That's, I can be... <laughs> because that's what you do, right? <laughs> to, my, to bring guy. about consciousness, that's what you got to do. You got to trigger each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's even a whole therapy approach based on it it's called imago mm. therapy i-m-a-g-o and it's all about that that partners trigger each other to try and you know work out their stuff from childhood that mm. they couldn't work out so you're you're oh. doing a service to humanity right here Tara, see, <laughs> ladies, see ladies you're watching i'm getting endorsed by the expert <laughs> 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 you got my endorsement. Take her away. Keep on triggering. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Leah. Thank you for introducing yourself. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, Mabel, go ahead. Introduce yourself real quick. Uh, mine's pretty simple. My name is Mabel Leota. I am from Brisbane, Australia. Um, I am a pickpacker, so I work in warehousing, and I am 22. All right. For sure. <laughs> you're in australia yeah <laughs> oh so All exotic right. compared to indiana exotic oh. <laughs> exotic <laughs> i'm in indiana <laughs> <laughs> it depends which part of australia <laughs> <It depends. laughs> oh yeah. right oh. Right, ladies, thank you so much for introducing yourselves real quick. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, anything you want to say about this lady, drop a comment below. Let us know where you guys are from. You know, she's from Indiana. She's from Australia. I'm all the way here from the Bay Area, San Francisco. So drop a comment. Let me know what you're from. I want to know where you guys are tuning in from. So uh, we'll go right into it. Let's let's go into the very uh, first question. All right. So, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go right into the hot topics. I'm going to give you guys All a really right. hot question. Yeah, bring right. it, bring it. Yo, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you know what? So the, the first question I'm going to ask you guys is um, I want to ask about casual sex, right? Um, because you guys are in modern day, modern day 2021. That's the culture today. Modern, that's the dating culture today about casual, mm -hmm. casual sex, right? It's yes. all about casual sex. So mm -hmm. uh, I have my views on it. I'm, I'm not a big believer in casual sex. I don't think it helps people uh, be able to find commitment, commitment with each other. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, uh, but that's just my view. Uh, I actually have a reaction video. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play for you guys. We're gonna react to it. 
Uh, this is a oh. video from a uh, from a doctor. Uh, she studies uh, evolution, evolutionary psychology, the difference between men and women, and especially when it comes to sex. So she has a very interesting point of view, um, and uh, I'm going to listen to it, and we're going to react to it, and then I'll ask you, you, uh, and I'll ask you ladies, what you guys think about it. But let me so let me play, let me play the video real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, give me one second. Uh, optimize. Alrighty. All right. Let me see. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. All right, there you go. Well, you have a section. All right. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Everything good? Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. All, right. All right, let me just get to the part. Um, I need. Really unhappy. All right. Hard woman. Give me one second. Expectation. There we go. All right, so I'm going to play the video real quick. This is a video I saw I was training on social media. Um, talk about casual checks, and then we'll, uh, I'll ask for your reactions and also ask for your thoughts about it. So I'm going to play it real quick for, the, for one minute. I mean, I have so many young women who would reach out to me saying they're really confused because they're being told particular messages either by the media um, or, or just they're being told if you are a strong and empowered woman that you believe that you are no different from men in any way, including in sex. And so you should pursue sex the way that men do or you should enjoy casual sex as much as men and if you don't there's something wrong with you and so I get these young women who are telling me that they are really confused they're really unhappy so I wrote that chapter for them and what I find really interesting is that um, I, I talk about how evolutionary psychology should not be seen as sexist evolutionary psychology is still very much a part of who we are um, yes birth control exists but it can't override the millions and millions of years preceding it and to pretend that it doesn't exist does us a disservice so a lot of people will say that evolutionary psychology is degrading to women it says that women should have stereotypical gender roles or that we should be submissive things like that mm -hmm. all right so i'm gonna pause it right there ladies all right stop to share so um the people that watch my my podcast uh uh then my view is when it comes to casual sex and uh I always tell people, you know, the, the men and women are different. Even though we live, we live in a society today that tries to push women that uh, the biological differences doesn't matter and we're equal. Um, for me, I do believe that, that there's, there's certain things that men can do that's, and certain things that women can do based on our biology and there's limits to it, right? Uh, one of the things uh, I believe is the reason why casual sex is not, is not beneficial for a woman is because for a woman, in order for a woman to, in order to, in order for a woman to have sex with a man, she must emotionally invest into that man, right? Yeah. She must, so the thing is, if you always, as a woman, if you're having multiple sex par sexual partners and you're just having sex with all these random men, that means you're emotionally investing in these men and these men are leaving, abandoning, abandoning in you. So you're going to have a lot of emotional problems and trauma from all these men that you're going to emotionally invest to, have sex with you, abandon you, and, and then it just cause a lot of issues with the, with, the, with the woman. But for a man, because we're different, we don't have to emotionally. Men can just have sex and just be and purely be physical. We don't we don't have we necessarily we don't have to necessarily invest emotionally. So that's why for a lot of guys, he, they can have sex multiple partners and still be healthy. And and then and when they do find a good woman, he can still be healthy when he has a relationship with a good woman and commit to that woman and, and they can have a, a good relationship. But for the for for a woman, if she's going out and having uh, casual sex with all these types of men, she's more than likely going you know, to have a lot of emotional issues. So it's not beneficial for her and also. You also want to add the fact that she took the risk of pregnancy if she, if she gets pregnant. There's also got another issue that's going to add on to her life. So I'm not a big supporter of casual sex. Uh, I think people should be in committed relationships with one person at a time. And if you can avoid sex, but I think that's one of the biggest issues today in our, in the, why a lot of women have insecurity issues, why a lot of women don't trust men, have like have a negative pers uh, perspective towards men is because mm -hmm. the cult, society is telling them to go have sex. And then when you have sex, you end up having a kid with the wrong partner. And then, you know, that can cause a lot more issues, right? I mean, maybe that issues, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right? But also you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have a lot of emotional trauma because all the men in your life failed you and abandoned you. And now it's gonna put a lot of, and then guys see that. And they're like, you know what? I don't wanna deal with that, with that girl. I'm gonna go, you know, that's just too much trauma to me. And also she may have a kid already, or, um, you know, for a lot of guys, they don't like a woman that's, ho that's a hoe, right? That's promiscuous. And you guys already know this, men don't like hoes. They don't want a wife on hope. So I believe that casual sex does a disservice for, for a woman if she's looking for a good man 
it's just looking for commitment, if you're looking for marriage, then don't do casual sex. But if you out, but I do see a lot, a lot of women today, they're uh, going out there having casual sex, but they wonder why, they're confused why men are not running up to their face. Hey, please marry, please marry me. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So, but that's my thoughts, ladies. Uh, and also, you know, that's, that's a, she's a doctor. She's done her research. So she's not basing her opinions based on feelings. She's based on research. This, this scientific data that shows that if a woman has sex, she's more than likely to have a lot of issues that come with it. But I'll open it up to you, ladies. What do you guys think about casual sex? Do you think it's a good idea? It's a good thing? Or do you, are you guys against casual sex? Um, I'll start with you, Mabel. What do you, what's your thoughts on it? Um, I, casual, casual sex is um, something I'm not, I've never done before, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but like, I feel like because because it's us women, if we have like so many different sexual partners and just like casually having like casual sex, we'll be known as the hoe. Yeah, like, we're obviously gonna be like called the hoe or or you know like just a uh, pastimer. But when yeah. it comes for having casual sex, they get praised for it, so it's kind of mm-hmm. different. So yeah, that yeah, that's all I know about that. Um, yeah. Okay. So you're sorry for you personally. You don't uh you you uh you don't you don't believe in casual sex. You know, if you want to attract a, a committed relationship, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, um, Neil, what's, what's your thoughts, Neil? You know, I think, first of all, it's really great that you're bringing this up because, um, uh, and, and it's important that you're bringing this up as a man, Will, mm-hmm. um, mm. um, because I, I think there's a way in which um, somehow I think women need to hear this from a man, mm-hmm. a man's perspective. Yeah. And what I will say is, um, I, you know, I have some controversial views. I think in general, this um so that societies are set up to disempower women okay mm-hmm. so all kinds of ways to disempower women because actually women have the power to birth and that is like the most powerful creative force on mm-hmm. the planet mm-hmm. so you won't you you know you want to try and disempower women because if they were empowered you're dealing with you know like a social force that's like uh, destabilizing for society. Mm-hmm. So if you tell women casual sex, casual sex, you're equal, go have casual sex. I actually think that's a way of disempowering a woman. Um, mm-hmm. When uh, when uh, when women unconsciously or without thinking it through, that's what casual means, Yeah, are just going off and doing something, which is, um, it's a deep, this is what I teach online. Um, sex is a deep and powerful energetic exchange Mm -hmm. all right if you're going to just casually do it you're you're depleting your own power you're depleting your own um resources Mm -hmm. um because generally men who want to have casual sex what they want is they don't have the ability to generate feminine energy within themselves Mm -hmm. and they want to deplete it from a woman yeah yeah right so um I, I think it's a way of women disempowering themselves. I think the way to empower yourself around your sexuality for women is to be highly selective. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Not only to be highly selective, but then to also be very specific of the about the kind of sex and very conscious about the kind mm-hmm. of sex that you want to have. Yeah. This is another way in which women get disempowered, right? They mm-hmm. don't have a voice now. They just have to go with whatever is happening in the moment. But what if as a woman, you could say, here's the kind of sex I want to have with you. And I need to have a one hour conversation about this. We need to have multiple conversations about the kind of sex that I like to have. Mm -hmm. And let me see, let me interview you and see if you're the right kind of person. But Mm -hmm. we don't allow that for women. We're just supposed to go have a few drinks, go in there and take Mm -hmm. off your clothes and, you know, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But but have you, you know, does a woman get to say, well, I I don't actually like doing that. And and I don't just mean Mm -hmm. physical things. I mean, even just the energetic, you mm-hmm. know, like we, I'm now I'm going on and on, Will. So stop me, with <laughs> whatever you want. We live, good. In, we live in a porn culture right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um, a, a lot of uh, pornography is not about consent. Mm-hmm. It's about disempowering mm-hmm. the female, mm-hmm. feminine yeah. um, and, and the masculine. I mean, it, it, those images that are being portrayed are not of human beings who are connecting around um love and 
empowerment. They're connecting around shame and disempowerment and, um, you know, yeah, around that. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's maybe it's about like, oh, doing things that um, are unacceptable. So it makes you feel powerful. Like, I'm going to do this anyway, even though my mama wouldn't want me to. You know, my yeah. dad does not want me doing this, but I'm going to yeah. do it. Um, so, you know, there is a rebelliousness to it. Um, but ultimately, pornography and pornography culture are not about empowering the masculine or the feminine. Yeah. Right. And I, I do have a question for Mabel, because I know, uh, um, you, you, I, know you, I know you're in your 20s. Because um, one of the things you said, society is pushing women, right? A lot of women out there today are having casual sex because that's what society is doing, but they don't really want to. But yeah. they feel like they feel like that they're gonna no man is gonna want them or no man is gonna they're gonna attract no guys if they don't want to give up sex. But let me ask you, Mabel, like your your friends, right? The, or the friends or the women in your in your circle, is that why you see with a lot of girls that you know, your friends and like everybody's just trying to have casual sex? Or uh, yeah. like like you know, can, can you share some of that? Like what, your experience? Yeah, sometimes um, when we're having like when we all pl- like say for example, we just had a recent work party. Yeah, and they like normal drinks everyone's drinking having a good time and half of the time everyone's always talking about oh hookups like oh yeah I'm gonna hook up with this guy I'm gonna hook up with that guy and sometimes I have to sit there and wonder like why like well what's the whole point you're just gonna hook up and then you're gonna come tomorrow at work awkward and stuff because like you don't want to come and see the same guy that you hooked up with and then um with with some with some of the girls they Sometimes they just want to have sex just for the pleasure of having sex. But mm-hmm. um, so like they'll ask me the same questions if if I want to, but I don't really want to. It's more because like once once you have sex, it's like you just you don't have the connection anymore. Like if it's just casual sex, like you you don't feel the connection as as well. And then there was like no point in sharing yourself like that. Yeah, yeah, because. Like I told you guys before, it like you know, if you if you emotion if you invest emotionally to somebody and they and mm. then that that person doesn't reciprocate it back to you, it causes a lot of eternal issues, right? Now you're questioning yourself. That's why a lot of girls may have like low self esteem. They're like, oh my god, this guy I had sex with this guy, and he just totally totally yeah. ghost ghosted me. Like, am I is like my am I something wrong with me? Am I not beautiful enough? Yeah. Right? And then, yeah. you, and then you see the same guy with another girl in the same workplace. Mm. And then the next. <laughs> Right. The next now there's like now you're comparing yourself to other other girls and now these girls are like wow mm. like, wow what's wrong with me but if there was nothing wrong with you but that's what happens when you're just sleeping with other guys instead of just being yeah. with one, investing to one guy that's gonna not only have sex with you but he's gonna stick around and appreciate you mm. right yeah all right all right um let me ask you ladies uh did you guys ever uh experience uh, did you did you guys ever go through your casual sex phase like you know um. And uh, in, 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 in the past, or were you guys always in this uh, this perspective where you want to be in a committed relationship? Because it'd be interesting to see, like, like how like how was it when you guys did go through the casual sex phase? Did you guys ever go through that phase at one time in your life? No. No? <laughs> no. And in fact, I have been um, voluntarily celibate for the past six years. Yeah. And, um, you know, there have been potentials you know, potential. And and I just thought, um, you know, if this is not going to be something that is going to be, uh, I mean, okay, it doesn't have to be like we spend the rest of our lives together, but at least it could be like we help each other, you know, like okay. we really kind of like help each other in a way that is like, empower, you know, like it's powerful. And I was like, this is not going to be powerful for me. Mm-hmm. So why, sh- I'm not going to do this. Like, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this if I feel like it's going to elevate me to the next level. And mm-hmm. that's the difference between casual and something that's sacred. Like if this is going to bring me to my next level of wherever I want to be in my life. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you know, um, and now at this point, I'm like, <laughs> this sounds so silly. I was thinking this today. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to meet a man at my level. So like, maybe, you know, like, um, I don't know, like what's, what's going to happen next year? Cause is there anybody on this planet who is now at my level? I have no idea. Mm. So, you know, like I just don't, um, yeah. like you can just tell the other thing that happens is if you're celibate for a while and you know, this is why a lot of like religions say to stay celibate before you get married, if you're celibate for a while, 
you're you're you become like so tuned in that like um like this happens to me all the time i'll like talk to somebody on the phone and afterwards i'm like what is going on with me and i'm like that must be what that mofo was feeling and then i just picked up on it over the telephone so there's no way that he is gonna be inside my body with all of that going on if on a phone call i'm like you know like overwhelmed with his like whatever you know his whatever <clears throat> I don't know what to call it. Energy, whatever. Yeah. Like this, this is not happening. You know, this is not happening. I, I would say this, the, the good thing about being celibate, right? Um, for a woman is you'll be able to uh, evaluate your man very objectively. So because your emotions are not involved, you'll be able to look at him and see all the, uh, the red flags. The thing is, mm. if you, if you, if you have, cause you already know this ladies, once you have <clears> sex with a man, you're mostly, you, you mostly invested to him some, some way, some, some degree. So a lot of times I see these ladies, right? You get, like when I look at the guy that they're trying to get commitment from, you see all the red flags. I'm like, why are you with this guy? <laughs> all right. All right. But they can't. But the thing is, once you when your emotions are involved, you overlook all the red flags because you're emotionally invested. But if you don't have sex and celebrate, you can take a look back. All right. Oh no. All these I see all the red flags. And you can walk away from it, but it's hard to walk away from a guy that you had sex with because now you at some at some level you emotionally connected with them. And then there's like a, mm. and a lot of women, they want to date the potential, right? There's a potential. Uh, hopefully this guy would, you know, you know, commit to me. And then this may be to my dream guy. But that's why I think is I tell you, like, no, be, be celibate. So you can be able to pick, be more selective and be, and have a wiser choice. Like if you're just giving it up, <laughs> you know, just throwing, you know, giving it up out there. Then that's why I like, I see a lot of, uh, a lot of girls, like uh, they make the, they get emotionally involved and they pick the wrong man. All right. Yeah. Well, it's hard, you know, we live at, at um, I mean, I, do, do being a therapist for like 15 years now, yeah. people are lonely. They could have, they could have a wife and five kids in their house. They could be part of a huge church community and they are full on lonely. And mm -hmm. why? Because yeah. they can't really be themselves. Like they're, mm. they're half themselves, you know, there's a part of themselves that they don't really get to be. And then you sit with a therapist and you're, you're like your entire self. For just an hour a week but like that hour a week is so powerful that it impacts your entire life you're like i can't do this anymore i i need to be my whole self with like everybody because it feels so good mm -hmm. you know and that's mm -hmm. the other thing about casual sex how can you bring your whole self you bring a sliver of yourself to the experience and usually the sliver of yourself that you bring is the part of you that's like impulsive adventurous what i would call like the shadow self the, the the part that doesn't care the the part that's like uh whatever you know like um but but that's a sliver of who you are mm. i think will what you're saying is after the fact especially for women then you realize oh that was just a sliver of me but the rest of me like really does care <laughs> yeah mm. yeah hey maple let me ask you this like uh because i guess you don't believe in casual sex how do you stay like, how do you, because, you know, there's a lot of pressure, right? Society, casual sex, but you're trying to mm -hmm. go against what everybody else is doing. Like, how do you, how do you stay committed to what you believe in and not, and not <clears> try to uh, do what everybody, and not feel temp tempted to do what everybody else is doing? Um, sometimes I, I honestly just vibe by myself. So unless I, like, find someone who's actually, like, got the same vibe as me, that, like, that's when I know, I, okay, that's the guy. But, like, like, other people, they'll go and, like, look, okay, he's hot, yup, I'm gonna do it with him because he's hot, like, plainly because he's just good looking. Yeah. <clears throat> After that, they complain, oh, yeah, this hot guy doesn't message me back, like, that's, okay, that's, <laughs> come on, like, like, you couldn't tell, like, from his vibe or, or something like that, I don't know, because I've, I've never done the whole casual sex thing before, so I, I wouldn't know, but other than that, like, I just, I just go for mostly their vibe and like the way they treat other people like i yeah. i sit back and I, I observe yeah so that, that's why I, that's why i brought up the the video of that professor right and, and she's pretty much explained the difference between men and women because um you have to understand when women when women choose to have sex with a man uh women have sex for the for the women have sex for the purpose of a potential of a relationship Right. Mm -hmm. But for men, we have sex purely just for sex. And that's why men, men and women need, women need to understand the difference between men. Like when, when they, when I, whenever I hear girls, oh my God, I gave it up. I had sex with him. He never, 
responded. I was like, yeah, he just, that's what men do. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> he got the sex. Like that. He may have told you all the things you wanted to hear. And, and, you know, but that's what, you know, that's, that's just the world we live in. I mean, men will manipulate you, tell you whatever you want to hear. So they get the ultimate goal. But that's the difference between, between men and women. Women have sex for the, for hopefully like for a potential relationship, but men don't, you know. And if a man wants to be in a committed relationship with you, he will, uh, he will do more than the sex. Like he will stay around and you'll be able to get commitment from him. Um, but, mm-hmm. but let me, uh, I had a question for, I did had a question for Mabel. Um, is, uh, do you find it, so because you want to, you know, you're not into casual sex, uh, do you find it hard uh, to, attract, uh, to attract men? Like, because I'm sure the men uh, still, still try to uh, pursue you, but then you have to tell them, look, I'm not into casual sex. Like, I'm looking for commitment. Like, how's that experience for you? And how's the response when you tell them, hey, I'm looking for commitment? Do they, well, like, what's, what's their reaction? Oh, I just tell them. <laughs> like, um, with, with some guys, um, sometimes when they reply to my stories or photos or stuff, stuff like that, it's always like, oh, yeah, you're so sexy. Like, they try to use the right words, but it doesn't really faze me because it's not really my right words. Yeah. So um, I just tell them straight up, like, oh, Oh yeah, that's cool. And then I just leave it at that. Like I don't reply after that. So, have you ever have you ever, have you ever uh, went on a date and you know, or with a guy and you, and you told him that you don't do casual sex? Um, yeah. And how did how One, did you how did you respond? Oh, uh, I just oh uh, I didn't want to be mean, but um I told him oh, nah, I'm not into that stuff and then told him to drop me off back. <laughs> what, like, do you, nah, what, what, what do you what what do you say? <laughs> what do you say? Oh, he was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. He didn't um message me back, so I was like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Yeah. But, but, but I don't know if you caught that nearly. Like, she said that she didn't want to be mean. It's got to, it's got into a point where you actually feel bad for, for having standards, especially when it comes yeah. to protecting your sexuality, which you shouldn't even feel that way. You know what I'm saying? But because of society pushing this culture, now the, the good women, the good quality women that do want to uh, protect their sexuality for the right man they feel they feel like oh i'm probably terrible i'm mean you know i'm a, I'm a terrible <laughs> you know i'm being mean yeah. to this guy but no you're doing exactly what you're, you know that's that's the best way to do it um and also nilo, nilo i want to ask you that same question because you've been celibate for six years like uh how how's that how's that uh when you when you do uh have uh go on dates or have you know go dates for men or have conversations with men and you bring that up like what's their what's the their typical response when they find out that you want to be celibate? Well, I mean, I haven't gone out on a date. <laughs> oh, okay. Years. Um, I mean, I you know, it, it's been much more organic. Um, it's been maybe like uh I, I mean, maybe I went on a couple of lunch. I went to on a couple of lunches and then it just wow. never went anywhere. So the situations have been much more organic. It's been like we're friends and you know, um, it's starting to change. Um, and then, I mean, I, I, you know, what I say is I'm already a single mother. And for me, sex is never going to be casual. Like I already, um, yeah. I, I can't imagine being a single mother to two kids mm-hmm. and I'm not going to do that to myself or my, or my daughter. So like, mm-hmm. you know, um, and then I'll say, I mean, I don't know, maybe, you know, I have not lost friendships, but I, I've not lost friendships, but I, I definitely distance, you know, distance came in the relationship in three, three friendships for sure. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll, what, I, what I've said is I've been like, you know, there are like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women that you can like do this with. And um, like, I'm just, I'm not her. Like we, we need to, we, you know, mm-hmm. either we're, this is going to be like, a, you know, I'll be like, you know, are you prepared to like provide child support? Like, I mean, we just need to talk about that because I don't get child support. Like, Me. I'm not getting child support. So, like, if I have a second kid, like, I'm not working first of all, and and then I'm gonna need some child support. And you know, it's like a funny. It's funny. It'd be like, well, how much do you need? I'm like, well, you know, listen. I mean, I we you know we we really we should be talking like five five k because like maybe a little more because like how am I gonna work with two kids? Like, I don't want to be working with two kids. And you know, it's funny. Cause he's like, seriously, 5k, you want 5k. I was like, yeah, I want 5k. What about 10? Can you do 10? You know? And it's funny, but, and it's, so it's silly, but it's also getting to the point, which is that like, I can't, I can't have casual sex because I, I, 
cannot be a single mother to two children um, unless I know for sure this guy is like, even if it doesn't work out, I'm going to be there for you. Right? Oh, okay. You see what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, if the conversation is serious, you know, what, what if he did say, well, listen, if you get pregnant, of course, I'm going to be there for you. We, we may not get married, mm -hmm. but um, I'm going to be a father. I'm going to be a provider for you. You can count on me. Like, you're not going to be raising these kids alone. Yeah. Right. Um, but the conversation never really progressed <clears throat> to that point. So I'm like, why? I'm not going to. Yeah. Not doing that. <laughs> you know, it would have been different if, if they said, oh, yeah, of course, Neil, you can count on me for the rest of our lives. I'm going to be there for you. Yeah. And both your kids. If we have a kid together, I'm going to be there for both kids because mm -hmm. it's not fair for me to be only there for one kid. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? and that's and that's and that's why for me, like I'm trying to push like uh, I'm trying to push to be anti casual sex and be and focus on being super selective because like the the, the, the doctor said, like the, the, the cost of uh, the cost of, of the risk or, or investment is kind of it's higher for the women because you get pregnant. Because so, you get pregnant. Yeah, so like that's why it's good for you to be very super selective. So you find a man that's gonna stick around uh, for for the, for the child. But if you're just going out there have a random, uh, be with random men, then don't be surprised if the guy doesn't stick around. Well, you know? and here's my standard. Well, this is how how far my standard has gone. Yeah. In my head, I'll be like, could I put all of my <laughs> money and my name in this man in in this in my, in my house in this man's name? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And do I trust him to take care of me and yeah. my child? Yeah. And if the answer to that is no, I really don't need to entertain yeah, anything yeah, else. Exactly. But like, if I can say yes, I could put all my <clears throat> money, to put my house and everything <clears throat> I own in this man's name, and I am for sure one hundred percent he will take care of us. Even you know what I mean? Then I'm like, yeah, yeah okay. Then I then <clears throat> I'll you know, are we allowed to curse? I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. Then I'll fuck you. Like, yeah. If I I know that if all my money was in your name. Like, I know for sure, like you got me. Yeah, we can fuck. Yeah. But it just hasn't happened. You know, I've not met a man who I would put <clears throat> my all my money in his name. And I would be like, here, you can have my body, too, because I trust you with my body. You know, okay. I had just hasn't happened. <laughs> all right. I do want to ask. It's the a lady. high standard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Changes the whole game. Exactly, exactly. Which is, which is, you, you have to be, especially when you talk about like, if you want the, a high quality father and a family, like you should be very, have, have high standards to the type of man you're going to allow into your life. I do want to ask you guys, ladies, a question because this is one of the things that I always, women get mad or I always trigger women, right? Because sometimes one thing that Neil said was like the disempower, the, uh, this movement, you know, to empower women, which I'm all for. But a lot of, but the thing is, I, uh, I'm all about empowerment for both men and women, but I do also, understand the biological differences between men and women right or what we can do because we're because men and women are designed for different purposes based on our biology so that's why a lot of women will say oh my god how come men can have multiple sexual partners but women can't and i already explained my point of view is because men can don't don't get emotionally vested into having uh when they have sex it's just physical but then for women you guys have to emotionally invest because that's how women are you're the more nurturing caring and emotional gender mm -hmm. right so I do want to ask you, do you guys have friends like, like you know, because, you know, if I say that, that you know, because for me, like if a guy has sex, I'm, I'm cool with it. Right. Most of us, because I mean, if a woman has sex, I'm against it. But for a lot of girls, are like, oh, my God, he's uh, <laughs> he's trying to suppress women. <laughs> he's a misogynist. <laughs> he's sexist. <laughs> you know, women can do the, everything that men can do. I'm like, no, we can't because sexual dimorphism, we're different. Yeah. You know, that's, that's why we have double standards. But let me ask you, Mabel, do you have friends like that? Like, you know. That uh, that they have that ideology. Like, you know what? If a man have have, you know, if a man can be a hoe, I can be a hoe. <laughs> if a man, man can have sexual yeah. with multiple partners, I can be have a multiple sexual partners. <laughs> yeah, well, no. your friends like that. Yeah, I do. Um, I have this one friend who's very like who's very much like that, and um, sometimes she at the end of the day she always comes back and she's like hurt. She's hurt all over again, and she's <laughs> of course. Like, I'm sitting there trying to comfort this idiot and like I, I just don't understand like like come on like you you want to be out here with like trying to get the same energy as like all these guys having sex with like multiple partners and then you try the same but it doesn't work out because like like us girls in our heads it's it's completely different we might think we might think oh yeah I can do what that guy's doing but low-key in our heads like 
like at the end of the day we're st- we still end up hurt so you know she's she's always the one that ends up hurt and I always have to tell her well it's not really anyone else's fault but yours because you're out here trying to trying to do what what everyone else is doing yeah you give her some good advice or <laughs> she doesn't listen oh I just tell her because <laughs> like I give her like multiple advice like throughout the years and she doesn't listen so so like uh, like it, it gets <clears throat> tiring because you keep saying the same things over and over again she doesn't listen so yeah 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 I know if a lot of women when they when they when I say that uh in public like they get mad oh my god like that's you know it's uh that's met that's uh that's misogynistic for me to have a standard for men and have a different standard for women than that but for me it's just like no because we're different right <laughs> so there's certain things that women can do that men can do certain things men can do women can do you know look I wasn't the creator I'm not the creator all right you know, go go ask your creator. <laughs> this is how we were designed. It's just it's just biology, but uh, but like I said, you know, we live in a modern we live in a society today that we, nobody wants to listen uh, to the data to the facts. But people just have their own subjective truth, and then whatever their so, truth is, that's truth, right? Um, but yeah, same thing. Uh, but yeah, ladies, uh, that's my thoughts on. Uh, hey, uh, maybe we'll have uh, I have somebody that wants to join. Uh, it's somebody that you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> somebody, uh, he just he just DM me said he wants to join the call. But I want to ask you, if you uh, I think it's your your older brother. <laughs> okay. Are you are you cool with that? Yeah, I don't mind. Are you sure? Yep. All right. All right. So what? Okay, I'll send him the. Let me send him the link. <laughs> uh-huh. But he asked me. <laughs> He asked if he wants to join, but I wanted to ask you first. If you if you if you don't want if you don't want to, oh, yeah. it's okay. Fine, honest. <laughs> all right, all right, we got all right for sure. All right, so uh, yeah, if everybody that's watching this right now, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, uh, you know what you guys thought about casual sex, but like I told you guys before, uh, my point of view when it comes to the casual sex, it's not beneficial for a woman because, like I said, you guys can get pregnant, and also um, you guys have to emotionally invest into the men that you're gonna have sex with, so. If you always have uh, multiple sexual partners, there's a lot of gonna be a lot of emotional hurt, just like Maple's friend. <laughs> you're gonna get <laughs> upset, you're gonna get hurt by all these guys that are done they're gonna, they're gonna smash in the past it. He didn't quit it, and they're gonna not respond to you. Because like I told you guys mm-hmm. before, like you know, men they want to have sex, and then women, uh, the reason why you guys have sex is to get kind of emotional connection or relationship out of it. Um, but that's why I think Nilo said it best, like, you know, uh be super selective with who you want to allow to come into your life and I also, I always tell women this because a lot of, you know, there's a narrative out there that a lot of girls have this insecurity that they don't give up sex. They're afraid that no man wants to, uh, is going to take them seriously. No man, they're going to attract any men because uh, because you know, they see all these other girls having sex. I always tell girls, like, look, I'm telling you, the the, the men, they'll, they'll have sex with all those girls, but then they'll wife the good girl. That's one thing I always tell girls. Yeah, so don't worry about it. Just let, the, let, the, let them have sex with other girls, but then when, he's, when men are ready to find commitment, They'll find you. <laughs> They'll find you. And you're going to be the one married. And the other girls are going to be the ones still running around doing the same thing. Well, I, didn't... Well, I do want to say this, Will. Go ahead. You know, for the, for the women who are out there who may have had a lot of sexual partners, mm-hmm. um, maybe you feel like, quote, damaged goods or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. You know, there's nothing in this, there's nothing that can't be healed or repaired. Yeah. Like you can heal yourself. Typically, if you have had, um, you know, like uh, you've let a lot of people into your life or let a lot of people into your body, it might have been because you didn't have good boundaries when you were growing up. So you never Mm -hmm. really learned how to have good boundaries and say no and Mm -hmm. like sit down, you know, like this is not good for me Mm because maybe you didn't get to do that in your family. So Mm -hmm. you can heal from that, that wound. You know, you can you can say, all right, fine, I you know, whatever. I slept with 40 people. I don't know, whatever, you know, yeah. whatever people number is. I slept with 120 people. Okay. I casually had yeah. sex with 120 people mm-hmm. or, I mean, let's even go further. I was a porn star and whatever, you know, I worked in the porn industry and I slept with like 500 people. I, mm-hmm. I don't know, whatever. Can you heal from that? Can you cleanse for yourself from that? Absolutely. How? with a lot of daily effort and work. So this is why 
everybody is so into meditation. It literally is spiritually cleaning yourself. Now, what it takes is, first of all, seeing your mess. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to see your own mess, right? Or if you're working with a therapist, you're clearing, you're <clears throat> cleaning, you know, or if you're doing yoga or you're um, chanting, you know, all these spiritual practices are literally meant to clean and clear you of all the things that hold you back from being your most like glorious oh. self. You know? mm. yeah. So if you're a woman out there and you've had a lot of casual sex and you feel like damaged goods, you know what? 10 minutes a day, commit, just say for 10 minutes a day, I'm going to clean myself. I'm going to cleanse myself. And everything <clears> that happened to me that hurt me, I'm going to clear it out of my system. And it might take me two years. It might, and I'm going to be celibate. It might take me five years, but I am going to clean and clear all of that shit out of me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for uh, giving some motivation for uh, the women out there that do have, uh, have high, have high body counts. And, I know, I know that's one of the biggest things that a lot of uh, uh, the, a lot of women would say, like, you know, uh, you know, that's uh, you're putting those women down by by, you know, by by saying my view of how um, men don't want to wife up a hoe. So the thing is, I always tell mm -hmm. ladies, look, look I'm not, I'm not going to judge you, ladies. Like, if you want to be a hoe, hey, go ahead. That's, that's, if that's what you want out of the life. That's what you want to do. All I'm saying is there are consequences to every decision we do in life. So that's the, the the thing is because of society today, you're, you're pushing women to have casual sex, but they're not telling them what the consequences of what's going to happen. Yes. Right. No. They're telling what that I'm saying is you can but, heal from that consequence. It doesn't exactly. have to be like a, a a permanent identity marker. I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess that's what it is for me. Like, you know, I didn't have that many partners, but I, yeah. I like I didn't have any casual sex partners, but I did have relationships, and um and they were wounding. You know. Mm -hmm. um, why were they wounding? I actually think they were wounding because I hadn't dealt with my my own wounds and they opened up those wounds for me mm -hmm. and they opened up that wound for themselves. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, you know, anybody who's out there, you can heal from anything that's happened to you. Mm -hmm. Just put yeah. work every day, you can heal from it. You don't have to have that be a permanent, yeah. permanent part of yeah. you. You know, you mm. really just take on a new identity by <clears throat> cleaning yourself of yeah. everything yeah. that you don't want anymore. You know how yeah. they say, um, I release everything that no longer serves me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, yeah. That, like I said, like, I was lady, like, look, you, you're free to make your own life choices, but just understand that uh, if you decide to be a promiscuous, you decide to be a hoe and go out there and sleep with random and multiple men, just understand there's going to be consequences not only to uh, attracting men, but also attracting the good, the good men, right? The good men that every woman wants to have, you know, mm -hmm. that's going to be a, a great father. Um, and, uh, and like I said, you know, that's why I always tell women that look, you know, the society's not going to tell you that because what, what society is telling these ladies is all rainbow and sunshine. Yeah. We'll have sex. Everything's good. You know, even happily ever after you're going to find your prince and uh, ride to the sunset, <laughs> that Disney, that, that Disney fairy tale, <laughs> right? But I tell women, no, like everything in life you have to work for. If you want a good man, you have to work mm. for it. And but you the know way what? I'll tell you, Will, love can help happen anywhere. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm just taking the most extreme examples, right? So there's yeah. this first, I think she's the first, like American Indian porn star is this woman named Sunny Leone. Yeah. Sunny Leone, okay, and yeah. she's Canadian. She moved here to, you know, um, uh, California. Got into the porn industry. She left at her house at like age eighteen, but she grew up in a very dysfunctional, alcoholic, <laughs> trauma-driven yeah. family, right? Yeah. So she go, goes into the and and where what does she do? She finds her Jewish husband. I mean, yeah. he's also a porn star, but now they're not mm. in the porn industry anymore. They're in Bollywood. They live in Mumbai. They started an art school. They adopted three different uh, foster girls, and mm -hmm. um, you know they're raising their family. And they're they're you know I, I think what what happened is they they rescued each other. That's my take on but, it. Like she probably just never had anybody, but she was a porn star mm -hmm. and she found love. So I, I you know I just want I'd like to say that the women who are out there. Um, you're not permanently damaged just because you're promiscuous. At any point in time, you can decide to be different. Yeah, you, 
I would say this to add to what you said, they're not permanently damaged, but I would say this just to keep it real with the women out there, there's a high probability mm -hmm. of you finding a good man. Right? Yeah. So that's the thing that I like. I'm all about probability. What are the chances? So if you want to be promiscuous and have and go sleep around, that's fine. But it could be really, really hard for you uh, to find to find uh, to find a good man. That's, and that's why a lot of porn stars. I don't know if you guys ever watch uh, porn star podcast. Um, if you watch a lot of pod, if you listen to a lot of uh, porn stars on, on the, they they do podcasts, they always talk about how it's so hard for them. Like these are very beautiful women, you know, very gorgeous women, right? But they find it hard, and like you know, when when women always ask me like, "Oh, gender differences or biological differences doesn't matter," I'm like, yeah, "It does matter." Look at porn stars, the most beautiful women in the world, but they can't find a husband to save their life is because this, you know, we're different between men and women. But nevertheless, let me know what your thoughts are. That's also I, another. I, I don't know, Will. I'm gonna be. I'm a. I'm a. I'm gonna come at you. With oh, go, this. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, that's also a way of disempowering women, right? Like what I want to say is I don't care what's happened to you. I don't yeah. care what bad choices you made, good choices. You know, whatever's happened to you, you can rise above it. Like, I don't know, maybe that's my, you know, I'm a Hindu. And that's exactly what Hindu religion is about. It's like you can rise above mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Even if you had casual sex with 500 people, I'm here to say you can rise above that and you can get what you want, whatever it is. You know, well, yeah. if well, you want a good husband, you can get a good husband, but you're going to have to put in the daily work for like years, probably to cleanse yourself of, of whatever is holding you back. But like, there is no woman on this planet who cannot get what she wants. She's just going to have to put the daily effort in there. The daily yeah. effort. I know mm. I, I, no, I totally understand where you're coming from. But the, for, for me, it's all about if there's a different path that's, that you can avoid going through those climbing that, that that mountain why 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 take that route why go in a route that's much much more uh logical and somehow more better more advantageous and, and, and of course like most people don't have the uh, the determination because in the, to 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 go through that process if you talk about just the average person most people give up right there's a certain reason why certain people succeed and certain people don't because the people are successful and they're very driven individuals is everybody had that drive everybody was successful it's the same thing with attracting a good man. If every woman was doing what they were supposed to be doing, every woman would marry today and have a good man. There's clearly a reason why all the good men are with these certain type of women is because those women were able to behave in a way and make choices that was beneficial for them. But like I said, like that, and that's just my standpoint. It's like, I'm not trying to disempower women. I just want to, I'm just, women, like, look, women, if you know, if you go down this route, this is, this is the journey you're going to take. There's a lot of mountains you have to climb. <laughs> There's a lot of- Well, see, I guess I have a different experience. Like yeah, part yeah. of, you know, I live in a small town. Yeah. And um, there have been a few women who've come to me who literally were strippers since they were like, you know, it's a small town, you got to make money. They yeah. started stripping when they were 16. Yeah. And, you know, they're coming to me. They're 19, 20 years old. And they're like, I want to go to college. I want to I wanna get married. I want to have kids. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. We're gonna make it happen. All right. Okay. We're gonna make it happen. Yeah. You, that's what I mean. It's like no one gets to be disempowered. So how are we gonna make it happen? First yeah. of all, you gotta agree to make less money, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta agree to make less money, get a job that maybe um, is it, you know, because in some ways there are advantages to doing those kinds of jobs. You make mm -hmm. money faster, mm -hmm. right? So are you willing to give it up? And are you willing to do the hard work? Mm -hmm. um uh going to college is not easy mm -hmm. you know um maybe you work and you do it part-time i i helped somebody do that and she yeah. did get married and she did have two children mm -hmm. and but why did she get into stripping in the first place well i mean she was abused by her family as a kid so it wasn't really her choice you know it was like this thing that happened to her and then she's just reenacting the trauma reenacting the trauma yeah. reenacting the trauma mm -hmm. but in a slightly empowered way because she's gaining financial security. Yeah. You see what I mean? But it wasn't her fault that she got abused as a kid by multiple family members. That's not her fault. And then, you know, the casual whatever sex came from that. It's like she didn't just, she yeah. just really didn't know what she was doing. So I don't know. I just want to, you know, like, you see what I mean? Like, um, I want to be careful about every woman gets to have power. Just because, yeah. you know what I mean? Just, it doesn't, no. you're not, you're not, 
you're not exempt from having power if if you've been promiscuous. You still get to empower yourself. I would say I would say that that is like the power comes from accountability, right? Is when you like I said, it's not your fault if you grew up in a certain household, a certain circumstance, and bad things happen to you because we all go through that at some point of our lives. Yeah. But but yeah. But, but we are responsible how we respond to that after. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you if that if bad things happen to you, but you choose not to make any changes, knowing full well those choices doesn't do anything beneficial for your life, but you repeat the cycle, that's on you. So that's why but, I tell, you know people in their twenties. I'm not in my twenties. Yeah. But people in their twenties are still so young that like if they haven't figured it out yet, I'm like that's okay. If you're in your thirties and you haven't figured it out yet, that's okay. You know what? If you are in your 60s and you have not figured it out yet, that is okay. Like, you're just going to figure it out. You're going to hit consciousness when you hit consciousness. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Like, I just feel like, you, you know, people just, you know, popcorn pops when it's going to pop. Every okay. popcorn kernel pop, pops at a different time. And like, mm-hmm. you can't predict when, a, when it's going to pop. Somebody's <clears throat> not going to pop until they're like 60 and finally decide but, to like change the, their life but i know but the thing is like if somebody keeps if they don't make any changes and don't take accountability and they keep doing the same thing all over for long periods of time their life just gets worse so yeah you know so i'm saying for, for me you know respectfully i would disagree with what you said and i think it's you're actually hurting them instead of t- telling them directly look take accountability for what happened to you but you can i would say you always have opportunity to change your life every single day because you can make new choices every single day but, but I'll tell you, Will, some things, some experiences yeah. in life are so incredibly crippling that you can't even deal with them until your 40s or your 50s or whatever. I, I mean, I that's what I've seen. Yeah. I've had 70 year olds come to me. I had this one millionaire. I was like, full on, really? This is what I, yeah. I had this millionaire come <clears throat> to me and be like, the only reason you're seeing me is for my money. Yeah. And I was like, oh, all right, well then don't effing pay me. Yeah. Test me. Yeah. Full on, he did not pay me for months. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah. my mother never loved me. But I think you might love me because yeah. I'm not paying you. And I'm like, oh, God, Lord have mercy. Like, I'm a single mother here. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, yeah. but I did it because on principle, I was yeah. like, if that's what you need, because I don't know who else is going to do that for him. And anyways, I believe like if you do something nice, money will just, you know, it, it may, may not come from that source, but it's going to come from some other, some other source. Yeah. So like, yeah. he waited until like in his 70s to deal with his mommy issues. Okay. All right. Yeah, but ladies, thank you. you. (laughs) Like, that's just how it was, right? Yeah. Like, Mm. what can you do? How could you rush him? How could I rush him? Yeah, I mean, all I'm saying is, like, I'm sure, ladies, you guys, you've seen people that come from, like, the most worst circumstances in life, the most terrible, horrendous things that happened to them, abuse, rape, whatever. And you've seen those people able to rise and elevate and become successful and live a very happy life. So those people can do it. There's no excuse for anybody out there, whatever you're going through you can do it it's just you're gonna have to put in the the work the effort determination you have to go through that process of making all those changes in your life it is possible um but like i said uh, but there's there's nothing that i'll one i think one of my favorite quotes is there's nothing that you have gone through that somebody else hasn't gone through the same situation and made a better life out of so Mm. so that's why for me i don't have a lot of sympathy i will have empathy for you but i won't find sympathy for you because i know there's people right now that's in the third world countries starving but they're, they're figuring out a way to live and survive and still get out their situation and and if they can do it uh you can do it as well but like i said but i think this you know we need both sides to the healing the process and people like you nilu uh and also mabel and also they need to hear my my <laughs> people like me tell me tell them yo get your shit together yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> well i think what you're life. trying to do is you're trying to wake people up you're trying to yeah. say listen yeah. do something different yeah. And um and that's an important voice to have out there. You know, you're kind of like tough love. You're tough yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the masculine well, that's, typically that's, is, right? You're tough love. And I'm like, yeah. it's okay. We can do this. It's, you know, you can take your time. And you're like, tough love. You gotta get this. You know, and you uh, need both. You need both. You need Mabel, both voices. Maybe with yeah. a specific, specific honor. That's the only kind of love we get. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tough for- love. <laughs> uh, we're not on uh, there's no there's, there's, there's no have talk. like there's, a nurturing not, like, there's no there's no conversation like, hey there's, there's nothing yeah, like that. We that kind of like love and stuff we cringe we're like <laughs> what the hell are you doing <laughs> you don't get that from your moms <laughs> no nah, my, not? Just, 
it, it's it's a rare kind of thing. And if you do get it, it's it's either heartwarming or you're like, what the you heck? Know, Ew. No, no, you, you know you know who gets that from our moms, our grandchildren. When we have kids, yeah. they get that. They I'll get that. We don't get you that. You don't have like a feminine presence can... in your life who says it's all right it's a, you're doing great you're gonna be all right oh my god i am that presence then i am here to tell the both of you there is no rush <laughs> you're doing great you're gonna be just fine popcorn's gonna pop when it's gonna pop you're gonna pop when you're gonna pop you do not need to judge yourself you don't need to rush yourself you're doing great just you know it'll happen when it's happening whatever's supposed to happen right. like yeah, yeah thank you yeah, thanks for sharing that. If you're uh, if you're watching this right now, if you're from the islands, that message was that message was for you. It's <laughs> for you. You just need love. You know what? What I do online, it's it's called I call it's called bhakti. It's a it's a Sanskrit word, and the translation is love in action. Bhakti. Yeah. And it literally means that. And then in therapy for 15 years, what I've done, it's called a love cure. It's a Jungian thing. Yeah. And the idea is that nobody changes unless they feel loved. Oh, nice. All right. It's the we'll love that changes. <laughs> love, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that, Lilu. So yeah, let me, uh, that, was a good, that was a good starter for our conversation, start off the podcast, <laughs> the casual sex. Good conversation starter right there. Thank you so much. Everybody that's watching this right now, let me know your thoughts. What do you guys think? Uh, but we'll uh, shift it over to the next question. Uh, I'll, I'll um, start off with uh, Mabel. Mabel, what's your uh, what's your first question you want to bring up? Uh, I know you had a question you wanted to ask. Um, it's not really a question. It's it's more like a subject. Um, Go ahead, bring it up. Um, like honesty. Mm -hmm. honesty and mixed in between like loyalty as well like um i just want to know like why why like with some guys not all guys mm -hmm. why with some guys they um find it hard to be honest to to girls about like like yeah yeah that's the question okay so why certain guys uh find it hard to be honest and loyal yeah mm. And certain guys are not. Yeah. Okay. Uh Nilu, what what do you uh what do you what do you think? I, I want to ask you first before I give my response. What do you think about uh what she just said? Her question. Why certain guys are not honest and uh, not loyal? Well, I think honesty and um, loyalty are learned and practiced. So mm -hmm. if you learn these things and you're practicing them since childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll be really good that good at them by the time you get to your, you know, your adulthood. Mm -hmm. But as you know, I, and I don't know if it's like this in Polynesian families, but it's certainly like this in a lot of Asian families. Mm -hmm. um, uh, honesty is not a daily practice. So you don't bring your whole self to the table. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of things you just keep under the under wraps. Um, and, and as far as loyalty goes, that can be a trauma like um loyalty gets turned around in a way that it's like suffocating mm -hmm. right so um you know if you if you grow up watching loyalty be a positive experience if you grow up watching honesty be a positive experience then you know you replicate that but if those are negative experiences for you then you're just you know you're gonna do the opposite kind of thing right mm -hmm. um and in Polynesian like culture is, um, you know, in a lot of cultures, like having a mistress or um, cheating is kind of like, mm, it happens. Like there's not much you can do about it. Mm. So mm -hmm. then loyalty is not, is that, you're laughing, Mabel. So is that true? Oh, no, my, my phone just fell. <laughs> so yeah, if you, if, if loyalty is not part of the like family culture, then you're not going to learn it. Like, was cheating okay in your family? Did your, you know, did your mother or father cheat on each other? And mm -hmm. that was like they never left each other. So what mm -hmm. you learned was loyalty is not a thing. Like, that's not what you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's learned, right? All right. Yeah. yeah no, I can totally agree with that. For, for a, um, I think one of the things I always say to a lot of people, you know, the a lot of people, the love they show you is the love they 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 uh, they grew up at home. So if you grew up in a very unstable 
uh, uh, toxic household, then uh, and you know especially those uh, those those guys and girls that grew up in a house where the, the par parents separated or they had a abusive uh, relationship, then whatever love you learn at home is going to be the love that it's going to be the love that you're you're used to. So sometimes when people are loyal or dishonest or um, it's just because that's what they think love is because that's what they were used to and that's what they saw growing up. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say to you to answer your question, uh, Mabel, when it comes to men of, of why certain men are not loyal or dishonest, I would say is, uh, I think this goes both for men and women. I think number one, the first thing is intentions, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, the thing is, if a guy, if a guy or girl, if they, if they have the right intentions for you, they will be loyal and uh, they will be low and they'll be honest to you. But I would say this for a, coming from a man is, especially in today's culture of, of casual sex, and I say this all the time to a lot of girls, is there's two types of women, uh, there's the two types of women out there that men look for, is uh, the woman that they wanna have sex with and then the woman he wants to wife up. And especially in today's age where there's a lot of casual sex, a lot of guys will have casual sex, uh, but when he's ready to be committed to you, then he will wife you up. So I always tell a lot of women out there, if the guy is not showing you all the, he's not doing the things that you want him to do, or he's not changing, or he's not showing you commitment, then just understand that he's not like, he's not, that you're not the one for him, right? Because when a guy is ready to settle down, when a guy is ready to commit to you and wife you up, he will, right? And if it's not doing for, because sometimes I see girls like, they complain when a guy leaves and then do everything that she wanted him to do for, him, for her, he's doing it for the other girl. Right. Mm. And I was tell her, well, the reason why he's loyal to that girl, is because uh, you weren't you were just the girl he wanted to have sex with. Right. And then the girl and then when he's when when, when the guy's ready to settle down, he's committed to you. He will do that and he will uh, he will show it. But I would say this is uh, there's certain qualities that men look for when it comes to wifing up. And there's certain qualities, uh, especially when it comes to wifing up in marriage. And that's something I, I always want to put out there for a lot of la ladies. When it comes to sex, men don't have standards. They'll, 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 they'll say anything to you. They'll manipulate you. They'll lie to you. <laughs> when it comes to sex, it's just having pure sex. They'll do anything they have to do in order to have sex. With you. That's just, that's, it is what it is. But when it comes to commitment and it comes to, to marriage, uh, there are certain qualities that men are looking for, especially our standards when it comes to sex is low. But when it, when it comes to a wife, our standards are very, very high. And the standards that men look for typically when it comes to marriage is they don't want a, a woman that's a hoe. You know, they don't want a woman that's a hoe. They don't, they don't want, a, they want a woman uh, that's feminine. They don't want a very masculine uh, woman. Uh, they don't, typically, they don't want to raise another a woman's child. So if you if you're a woman out there, you have a child, that can be a, a, a deterring factor of why a lot of guys won't show your loyalty. But, uh, and also, uh, what's the last time I was trying to think in my mind? Uh, yeah, but those are usually the things that, so if, if, if men are not honest to you, they're not showing you commitment, it's usually those, those, those are the main qualities that men don't, don't want to wife up. They don't want to wife up a hoe. They don't want to take care of another man's child. Uh, uh, or you're just too, uh, too masculine for him. Uh, you're just too masculine to act like a man. Because a lot of women out today are very masculine. They, men, are, men are always looking to form a the feminine uh, person. So, um, and that's why you see a lot of girls are very beautiful, but they, they, can't, they don't know why these guys are not wifing them up. It's just, I always say, like, you, know, why, you, know this, you know that's the term, wifing material? Right, so there's a lot of girls mm -hmm. out there, the modern women today, like the the wifey material. And I would, I think to make to make it easier for you, ladies, wifey material is traditional women. That's just what I see when I talk to a lot of men is they'll have sex with everybody, but most men they want to they want to wife up a traditional woman. So I, I feel like um because in in a poly household and like with experience um mm -hmm. because I'm the oldest oldest girl and mm -hmm. oldest oldest girls have like a lot of responsibility in the household um with with you saying um masculinity um it's very hard for us girls mostly because we are raised we are also raised doing both a girl's job and and the boy's job in the house yeah. so yeah it's it's very yeah i think that's the only reason why unless it's either that or Oh, it's something. Oh, I forgot what the word was. But like, it's 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 harder for us older older girls to um find a relationship if the problem in guys were like, oh yeah, she's too masculine for me. But it's it's like the way we were raised. We were yeah, raised so, in that. Yeah, yeah. That's something I have noticed with a lot of 
Pacific Islander girls is like a lot of them are very masculine because that's how you guys are raised, right? Raised like you guys are mm-hmm. raised like boys. Right? Yeah. So I do see that a lot with our uh, the girls are very masculine, right? Very strong. They want to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Well, that they explain to them like you know it's femininity it's like you have to be able to show your feminine side so um yeah like uh because every girl has a feminine side the thing is the problem with a lot of masculine women is you know the the guy that you that would the, if you're, especially if you're very masculine you you, you need a guy that's more masculine than you right that's what happens because if you're ever a feminine woman you're going to be attracted to any masculine guy right whether it's the masculinity was average above average or very very masculine but if you're a very masculine girl the guy that you want is going to be the the very masculine the guy has to be more dominant than you mm-hmm. and then they then be able to be vulnerable to him but the but the thing is that the more the masculine a guy is the more he's looking for a feminine woman that's the, that's the, that's the problem so the more masculine guy is he always wants to he might have sex with you because guys they don't care if you're masculine or feminine they'll still have sex with you but the masculine men they they want the feminine woman so all you gotta, I think, I think all you gotta do is just be able to show your more of your, uh, um, your femininity, you know, and be able to, like, is that, is that something that you experience uh, yourself? I like, uh, guys think that uh, they, you're very masculine. Um, no, I, I just get told um by my brothers half the time. Huh? <laughs> um, and like I, I've never seen it as as much like much of a problem, but I, I I sometimes hold back from trying to show my masculine side, mostly because I don't want a like the guy to feel less of a guy. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if a guy, the thing for you is like, if because would you say you're very masculine yourself? Yeah. I guess I think you would. I think the best chance for you to find a, like a, a guy that you would be attracted to, and he'd be attracted to you, is a find a very find a find a, a masculine guy, you know, a guy that's more masculine than you. Because if you meet a guy that's very that's not in tune with his masculinity, he's gonna he's gonna because you're more masculine than him, he's gonna be on a, he's gonna deter him from from you. But if you meet a guy that's that's very masculine, he and more than you, he won't be deterred by he. I mean, he won't see your masculinity as an issue, but he may, but he will. But if you have, but the thing is, like he'll still he'll still be able to be with you, but if you be able to, after after the initial initial date, you'll be able to show him more of your femininity, um, mm-hmm. and he'll he'll be able to st- to stick around, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, yeah, just yeah, I I just yeah, of all the poly girls out there, I just noticed like a lot of them are very masculine, like they they don't act act feminine or you know, especially with the way they dress, the, the way they act. Mm-hmm. You know, act like a guy. So, like, I was to tell my sisters out there, like, yeah, just bring out your feminine side. Because we got, huh? we don't live in a society where it's necessarily safe to be feminine. You know, if you're masculine, mm-hmm. you're protected. Um, you, I mean, it's a false type of thing. But like, uh, you know, if you dress more, you're less likely to be attacked. You're less likely yeah. to be messed with. You know. Um, you're less likely to be like taken advantage of because you're not seen as feminine you're seen as masculine and maybe not as vulnerable right Mm -hmm. so i spent many years of my life i remember in college full i went i would wear like like really big clothes and yeah um, and try Mm -hmm. to look more masculine and the reason for that was i'm I'm just being honest like i didn't want to get raped yeah that was that was the bottom line. Yeah. And then, you know, in my 20s, when I got a job and I had a partner, um, I was I was able to be more feminine because I felt protected. You know, I had mm-hmm. my partner. Um, mm. But I, I do think that women who have uh, safety, safe relationships, either safe families or a safe man in their life, they can be more feminine because they feel they have yeah. protection when when i don't have protection like you know as soon as i get into a relationship i lose weight i um i i do feel more feminine because i feel like I, you know i have this guy's gonna you know <clears throat> defend me or something mm, like <laughs> you, you dress up more as well like yeah i feel like i can be doing the exactly, money mabel mm. i feel like i can be more sexy um but mm. when I'm single, i don't necessarily 
like to be because I don't, I get nervous about the attention. But as soon as I have a partner who's safe, um, then I do feel like I can be more beautiful and I'm, I'm, I'll be yeah. okay. You know, yeah. I'll be okay. Yeah. Let me, but let, let, uh, let me, maybe I have a question for you. Um, thank you for sharing that, Neil. Thank you for sharing that. Um, no, thank you. Maple, um, you have a, you have a, uh, a fear of of men like uh you know like um you're afraid that he's some a man might come in and uh waste your time or hurt you um yeah okay because one thing i, I realized because really, um, thing, go ahead. It's, it's not it's not only that it's because like i've got two kids already and yeah and it's like you're gonna be wasting a baby mama's time like come on like we're, we're already raising two kids we don't need to raise another kid and and like you know like yeah it's like that no, because one one thing I've noticed when um, women who are very masculine is is uh usually a lot of them have a fear because the men in their in the past didn't protect them because like Needle said when you're with the right man and you feel protected feel loved that brings out your vulnerability and your femininity as a woman. A lot of times mm -hmm. these these women uh, they had a bad experience with either with their past men or their father or or the or the men in their life. So now your guard is up, and then you act yes, like a man. I mean, you're you're trying to kids. yeah. Yeah, you want to protect yourself. She's got to protect yourself. those kids. Mm. But 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 the, who the, else the, is helping you protect those kids? <laughs> Pardon? Maybe. Who is helping you protect those kids and care for those kids? Really, um, besides you, my parents and my brothers. <sighs> but but here's yeah. a but here's the thing, Mabel is like because you in order for a, you're already masculine, so the guy that you're gonna be that you're gonna be attracted to is, is the the guy that's gonna be more masculine than you. Uh, but that guy, like I told you before, that guy's looking for femininity. So one, one thing I always had to talk to a lot of girls that have been hurt before or maybe masculine. I was like, you have to bring your guard down and, and bring more of your femininity so he can see it, right? But a lot of times your guard is so high, and and the, but, uh, especially when it comes to masculine men, I, I'm very masculine myself. I'm always craving a woman's vulnerability. I'm looking for emotion. I'm already strong myself. Like I don't, you know, I'm already strong myself. I'm already. I don't like to talk about my feelings, but. I crave that in my in the in the partner I'm looking for. So I'm not looking for mm -hmm. a girl that's the same as me, that strong and don't want to talk about her feelings. I'm already doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't want to talk about my feelings, but I want to, the girl that I want to be with, I want her to talk about feelings. That, for me, that's what I look for. So for you, for a lot of masked women out there, I have to explain to them, like, you got to bring those walls back down, go through that healing process and understand mm -hmm. that, you know, leave that in the past. You know, if that was just a bad experience with that man, but there's many men, many men there's many men out there that's going to, uh, be the right man for you but for those men they need to feel that feminine energy for me especially the very masculine dominant guy that you guys want to be feel protected because once he meets you and you show him your vulnerability and, and your feminine he's gonna be like, oh okay I, he'll be able to you'll be able to attract him to come closer to you a lot of times I'm, i've been with some masculine women before i'm like i'm having a conversation with them but like, i don't even feel connected to them because their walls are so high because like, i could i could just tell like they're just so afraid. It's they're just the fear that I might hurt them, All right? And if a lot of guys are like shoot, I shoot. They're like if I can't feel anything from you on a very emotional level, then you know what? I'd rather go with a girl that's open with their feelings already. I don't have to climb through a wall just to get to mm. know her. Well, this girl right here, she's she's open with her feelings. She's just showing me all the feminine energy, emotion that I didn't feel from you. I I'd just rather go with this one. So you gotta. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing I have to say. Like, if you have that fear, you got to be able to work on that and bring that. Like, as like Neil said, when you feel comfortable with the guy, you've let that out. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 I don't say you just let it all out, but just let some of it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let some of it out. Let some of it out. All right. Um, Neil, Neil, anything you want to say, Neil? Oh, I, I also, before Neil, uh, maybe I have somebody in the comments said that. Uh, uh, if, you, if you're looking for a guy, he, he'll be that guy for you. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> well, you know, the thing that about this conversation that is striking me the most is, um, you know, you learn to be vulnerable in relationship, I think, with your mother or your father. And if you mm -hmm. don't get to be vulnerable as a kid, you know, I see it with my own daughter. Like sometimes when I yell at her, I see her clench up and close up. And then I see her when she's... And, and then it happens at school, like, you know, people are harsh. And yeah. we have conversations about this a lot, that in our family, we're soft, we're nice, care about people. We call it bucket filling. Mm -hmm. We 
fill at least five people's buckets a day, which means mm -hmm. we just make people feel good. And it could be as simple as, oh, wow, that dress looks really nice on you. Or it could be more substantial, like, you know, you did a really good job leading the class and the stretches for our dance class, because you mm -hmm. know, the teacher doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you didn't get to have, as a kid, to be vulnerable and soft with your mother mm -hmm. or your father, mm -hmm. then you've learned to harden up. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I'll tell you, I had a very difficult life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've been working since I was 10. My first job was when I was 10 because we mm -hmm. were poor. And I'm not gonna, it's not a pity party. Like, um, I still remember that lady I worked for. She was an Italian lady. She was paralyzed from the neck down. Mm -hmm. And I used to go to her house for $2 an hour. This was many years ago. And I would hey. feed her. <laughs> and I would talk to her. But I was 10 and that $2 an hour was a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then in high school, by the time I was 13 and 14, I was babysitting every weekend and I was buying my own clothes, mm -hmm. you know, because we just didn't, we didn't have it. And so you toughen up, right? But the thing that kept, that brought me back totally and utterly brought me back to softness um it's it's a it was becoming a mother yeah she's eight and a half mm -hmm. and um i just wanted to give her everything at the same time i became very <clears throat> strong too, mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah so it's if when you do yoga it's strength and flexibility yeah it's both got to be strong got to be flexible so the strong is the masculine and the flexible is the feminine yeah. and yeah. you know even now i find myself you know, hardening up. And then I have to remind myself, like, I got to soften. I don't want her to be hard. I want to, I want her to feel like she can soften. And here's something that, that happens. So like last night is the perfect example. Um, it, we must've sat for an hour and she drew all these fashion design dresses mm -hmm. for, in order for a child to be able to do that, to go into their own world and draw stuff that comes from their own imagination. They have to feel safe in the house and they have to feel safe in the relationship. If you don't feel safe, you cannot flow into another state of mind because mm -hmm. you're always on guard. Mm -hmm. You know, you're always on mm -hmm. guard. When am I going to get attacked? When am I going to emotionally attack? When am I going to get physically attacked? Mm -hmm. So you, you just never are able to like go into your imagination kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have grown up that way, both of you sound like you grew up that way. You grew up in homes where you had to harden. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah. I'm getting. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So how do you soften then? I mean, you know, like for me, I've had a therapist for years. I, I think I've done therapy for 25 years. Also, because I wanted to become a really good therapist myself. Mm -hmm. Not 25. Yeah, something like 20 years. Maybe not 25, but 20 years I've done therapy. And when mm -hmm. you sit with your therapist, if they are really good therapists, you can soften with them. And then you don't have to be hard all the time, but you'll notice it as soon as you're around your mom, you tough up, toughen up because she wanted you to be tough or you had to be that yeah. way with your dad. And then it's hard to meet people. Like maybe you're in a community where almost everybody is tough, you know? And so now, you know, you're maybe you got to look for people where it's okay to be soft because they're safe. Mm -hmm. You know, they let you be soft and they're not going to judge you on it. Like maybe your mom did or your dad did toughen up. Mm. You know, like you can you can feel it i bet when you get around your mom mom or dad you like clench right you clench up yeah and like mm -hmm. feel the difference in this conversation where it's like an opening it's like mm -hmm. you know, we can uh, none of us feel like we're going to get attacked or that we're going to get judged or anything so we're like so soft yeah. with each other. we're like just so honest and soft with each other and um it's hard to do if you it, it's hard to find your people we don't live in a soft world Oh yeah, the life is not soft. Yeah. Life is not soft. I would I would say I would say to what Nilo said to respond to Mabel, like um, you know, the mother, right? The mother figure, right? For a lot of guys, you know, when we meet men, uh, when we meet women, like we're looking uh for a woman that's gonna be the mother of my child. Right? That's why femininity is so important for me, uh for you to bring that out. So I've 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 gone on dates with uh, uh women who are very independent, very successful. There's a different feeling when I go with the, on a date with a girl that's just very nurturing and caring. And in my, and subconsciously or consciously, I'm like, damn, she can be my model, my child. So I'm more attracted to that woman. It's like, I've been enough days with very masculine women, very independent, successful, talk about their success. It's it's cool. But then when I meet a very nurturing, loving woman, that I, I, I'm like, damn, this, 
this girl is ready to be a mom. And I can, I can see her as, as the mother of my child. I'm, I'm just attracted to her. So for a lot of masculine women, you guys, because of those walls, a lot of guys, like when we, especially when we're looking for commitment, we're looking at you as a potential mother of my child. And if you're not, if you're unemotional, you have your walls up, they're like, man, I can't even get to, I can't even get close. I can't even bond with her emotionally. How is she going to bond with my kids? So I, men are always looking for the nurturing and caring. So if you, if you show more of that, it does help. Well, and the truth of the matter is, you know, it's all fine and good when things are going well. Yeah. But in crisis, when, when you go through crisis, the only thing that gets people through crisis is being loving and nurturing and kind. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, it's hard to get through crisis with hardness. All right. I mean, maybe some people could do it, but like for me, it's like if, if, if we're in crisis, you know, I want to be nurturing. I want to be kind. I feel like we get, we'll heal through it, you know? Um, yeah. The, the dilemma with the dilemma, with a lot of girls is like, and I think hopefully maybe you don't make this mistake is especially the masculine women is like, they would do, they try it one time, right? They'll, you know what? I'm masking. Let me try this femininity out. And they'll try mm -hmm. it one time and they try it one time. And then the guy, oh, I'm feminine now. And then the guy, he went on a guy with a date with somebody it didn't work out. And I have to tell him, no, just, you have to be feminine at all times and to meet the right guy. Just because it didn't work out, for, just because you switched up and be feminine and didn't work out. Oh, see, it didn't work. With, I was feminine. It didn't work out. I'm going to go back to my masculinity. No, it's, just, it's like, you know, finding the right guy is going to take time. So, you know, don't, you know, if you meet a guy and you're feminine to him and he, he, didn't, and he didn't vibe to your femininity, it doesn't mean he didn't work. <laughs> it just means that you he, he wasn't the right, right man for you because the right guy uh, will, will, will come. But yeah, Nilo. So uh, that was Mabel's question. Mabel, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you much for your question. There was uh, some people on the chats there said they they want to be that man for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll you know, I, I have to tell you, like I I just I, I've told you, Will. Like I yeah. got on TikTok like a month ago. Yeah. And I cannot tell you, like I don't. I'm like, what is happening here? Like you know, I love you. I, there's so many people who just say, I love you. And I was like, what is that? What is that? <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is like, yeah. I've said that to so many people in my life. Yeah. Like, literally I've said to so many patients, you are loved. And, but I'm like, nobody really said that to me. Now people are saying that to me and I'm like, what? Like, what is that? You know? And I'm really yeah. trying to like, like you're talking about, like, I'm really trying to soften to it and be like, thank you. I love you too. Thank you for your love. Because my initial reaction is like, what? Why? Why do you love me? Like, why? And then, and so I go back and I watch my videos. So here's something for, about social media that I've noticed. Like, we're not actually on social media for other people to watch us. Mm -hmm. We're actually on social media to watch ourselves and understand ourselves. Okay. Right. And so I go back and I watch my videos and I'm like, all right, if I was somebody and I found her videos, what would I think of her? And I'm like, she is just so sweet. She's really kind. She like is mean to zero people, no matter what they say to her. She always finds a way to be positive. Like, I really like her. I do love her. She's adorable. Mm -hmm. You know, like removing yourself and watching yourself and seeing how other people might feel. And then mm -hmm. it makes it easier for me when somebody says, I love you. I want to marry. Some guy was like, hundreds of, I'm not trying to be egotistical but hundreds of people are like can I marry you so this is what I have started saying I'm like in a sense we are already married because you're a drop from the collective masculine yeah and mm -hmm. I consider myself married to the divine masculine mm -hmm. you know like divine masculine who's out there um where you know who's the existence and so if I'm married to him the divine masculine with capital D and a capital M, and you're a drop, then we're married too. And I guess I'm polyamorous, you know, oh. but it's energetic. Like I, oh. I can't sleep with you. I don't want to, but energetically we're married because, and it's the same thing for you. You are the husband of every single drop of feminine. And it changes the whole way of looking at men or unlike looking at women you mm -hmm. know when you say mabel is a drop from the ocean that is a divine feminine like all of a sudden you can't you know like you, you look at her differently mm. you know will is a drop from the and, and will you truly are you truly i'm doing this with you because you truly are a drop from the the ocean that is divine masculine like and you're mm. so young 
not that I'm that much older than you, but like, you know, whatever, like I got an older sister <laughs> thing going on. I'm an older sister. So like, whatever, you know, um, and it's also an Indian thing. Like you could be like one year older than somebody. Like, oh, yeah, I'm your older sister, you know, yeah. <laughs> but like you truly have at such a young age, this, um, and what does it mean to be a drop from the divine masculine? You have a sense of responsibility. You have a mm. sense of mission. You have mm -hmm. a really big sense of mission. You have a sense of like devotion to your community. Like you want to uplift your Polynesian community full on. Mm -hmm. And at such a young age, you've taken the courage, you make yourself visible, you take the risk, you know, you, mm. um, you put yourself out there to say, I am here, um, I'm here to help and I'm here to elevate and I'm here to raise your consciousness. And that's yeah. the divine masculine. That's what does the divine masculine do? They just want to elevate others. Thank you. Not in, you know what I mean? Yeah. You bring people yeah. together, you know, and you, you're, you're getting people to, to soften and open up. So someone like you, women are going to probably soften and be more feminine around you because they can, because you're safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're trustworthy. That's the divine masculine, being safe, being trustworthy, being mission driven, um, being like responsible, not just for yourself. You're responsible for yourself. We know it. Mm -hmm. And you're not just responsible for your family, but mm -hmm. you're like, I am responsible for the entire effing Polynesian community. Mm -hmm. Like that's responsibility right there. You know, that's the divine yeah. masculine. Oh, thank you. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you, man. I feel like the. Uh... Uh, that's what I needed when I was younger. <laughs> 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 but anyways, thank you so much, Nilu. Uh, Nilu. Uh, well, it's hard but, not to be seen, right? Like, yeah. And what I want to say is, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm saying this to you. All of a sudden, you really cut, you touch my heart by saying you don't have a mom who does this for you. And, you know, I lost a son, like, uh, probably about six years ago. You know, he, he was little. He was very little. And so I'm like... I, I, I would say this, like, the thing is, like, there were women in my life that did that for me, but it's just a different way that Polynesians show love. <laughs> yeah. It's just, we did it, we don't understand it when you're young, but then you go out to older, and you're like, oh, that's right. why. That's why they did it. Well, <laughs> yeah. did it. Which, just, my daughter noticed the time, and she said, it is 12, and you need to get off. So I do, <laughs> but here's what I want to say to both but, of you. You can hear her. She's saying, mom, well, I'll say it to you, Will, and then you can say it because you're, you know, this is your thing. What I want you to know. You've been doing this for two hours. Okay. <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing a wonderful job. I want to encourage you, Will, to look at yourself in, in your social media because maybe your mother didn't see you, but like you got to see yourself. And mm -hmm. I'll keep posting comments too because I really think you're doing an amazing job. No, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You too. I see you. Okay. We, see, we see you right. too. We see you too, Neil. I see you. Okay, I gotta go. My 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 daughter needs to see me. All right, shout out to you. All right, thank you so much. This was beautiful. Hi, right, Neil. Have a good one. All right, take care, both of you. All right. For sure. All right. I've been waiting an hour. All righty. All right. So uh, we got thirty more minutes left. So uh, Mabel. Uh, let me. I know you got some more questions. <laughs> There's some more questions. Huh? Let's dive right into those questions. <laughs> Let's dive right into those questions. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, yeah I want to. I want to hear. I know. I know you have some more. I want to hear your questions and uh, finish up the podcast with those questions. What do you want to talk about? Um. I did have a. I, I did have a question. Um, it's more um towards. Um, an experience I had a long time ago. Mm -hmm. This um, this guy once told me that um, that I was talking to. He said that he didn't want to have sex with me because he didn't want to ruin what we had going on. And in my head, I was like, oh, "Okay, sure. Like, okay, surely he's lying or something." But yeah, that's um, is that true? Is it true that guys? guys um what's, what is it like they they tell a girl they don't want to have sex with them simply because they don't want to ruin a good thing going on does okay how long did you uh, how long did you know this guy oh it was like 
a long time ago. It was probably like three years ago. Yeah, but like how long did you guys know each other? And for like know? almost a year. You guys so you guys knew each other for almost a year. Mm. And then and then um but he didn't want to uh, have sex with you because he didn't want to ruin a yeah. good thing. Yeah. Okay. Now there's multiple reasons why men would do that, but what just hearing it, just hearing what he said, it just sounds like he like uh, oh wait, wait! When you guys, when you guys were uh, for that whole year, were you guys dating? Like, how? What was it? Yeah. Do you guys were dating? Yeah. And uh, did you did you put a label in your? Uh, were you guys official, like boyfriend and girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, we were. Was he religious? No, in no way he was religious. He, he didn't really- believe in anything with religion. But he wasn't religious. Uh, did he have? Did he have like um? Like, did he have? Uh, morals or when it comes to like you only you wanted to wait to uh to to marry to have sex did he have those no. type of morals no because okay. he was having sex with other girls oh so he was oh so he was having sex with other girls during yeah. the relationship yeah and then and oh and then he wouldn't have sex with you yeah oh okay oh that mean yeah i mean if you if you said that um then he was just you know um Using you, just using you for your for your time and attention. You know. Oh, that's dumb. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if a guy, I mean, let's be honest, if a guy really, if a guy really, if a guy is committed to you, like he does want to have sex with you. You know, there's no guy that's like, you know, I'm gonna commit to you, but I don't want to have sex with you. That is, you know, you know, that doesn't yeah. doesn't exist. <laughs> doesn't exist. So, yeah, it, it just means it just means that um, his intentions for you wasn't the same. Why? Like he he wasn't looking long term for you. Okay. Yeah, and I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Like, uh, like did you like when did you bring up the sex bar? Like, uh, how long before? Like, when you guys first met? Like, how long mm-hmm. did you bring it up before you bring it, brought it up? Um, like five months into the relationship. Five months into um, it. He yeah he was the one who brought it up. Like he was always egging it on, talking about it, and um, I was like, oh yeah, sure, but um. Yeah, towards towards the end of the um relationship, that's when he told me, and I was like, "Oh, okay." So five, oh, so five months into the relationship, he he brought up the topic of sex, or you, or you, or you brought it up. He brought it up. Okay. Like he was and, egging, he was egging it on, like he wanted to. Okay, and then and when he brought it up, like, what was your response? Um, I said, "Yeah, like, like I, I thought, okay." five months then yeah this is gonna be like a forever thing but then yeah towards the end he was like oh yeah I, I don't like I don't want to have sex with you because I don't want to ruin like a good thing and I was like okay that's fine okay let me let me, let me uh I know you said you have kids right were you ever, mm. did you ever did you ever did a kid three years ago um no <laughs> okay okay so three years ago you you, you had no kids when you when you no. had him, when you were with him, yeah. Oh, okay, and so you, he brought it up, and then you wanted to have sex with him, and he didn't. He didn't want to have sex. No, he didn't. Okay. Um, for me, like if a guy doesn't want to have sex with you, it just means he's either super religious, but you already said he's not, right? Yeah, he's really not. <laughs> Number two, he's low key gay. <laughs> low key on the low. Okay. And or number three, he's uh insecure about his performance. Of his performance of of, of sex. Because like uh, yeah, I mean like yeah, like outside of those three reasons, I can't think of any reason why a guy that's you're dating him or you guys are dating and wouldn't want to have sex. Hmm. You know, I don't accept those three reasons. Like, either he's super religious and he wants to wait to have to marriage. I get that. There's religious guys out hmm. there. Um, um, or he's like, oh, like I said this before, like, oh, he's just secretly gay on the low. Yeah. You know, just putting up a front, just make it seem like he's dating women. But then, yeah. But but you said he's he but, but you said he was sleeping with other girls too, right? Yeah, he was he was having sex with other girls during the relationship. Oh yeah, then yeah, I, I think he was just. I think he was just using you like uh, a lot of a lot of times. What what, women, what men will do is like they'll have a roster of girls. Yeah. So they'll date multiple girls. So that way they have a roster, so they can always fall back to a 
little girl. So like he's having sex with this girl, like but he knows it. Huh? Like a past time off? Yeah, like yeah. So like a lot of guys will spend time with girls, right? Yeah. So that way, like if something happens with this girl, I can always go with this girl. You know what I'm saying? It's like a backup to a backup to a backup to a backup. That's why a lot of guys yeah. have, a, have a roster. But then even if you have a roster uh, with multiple women, he will only have sex with the ones he likes the most. So if he has like, if he sees, mm-hmm. if a guy is like talking to say six girls or seven or seven girls, then yeah. he will he will only have sex with the, the top two or the three he likes the most. And then you, the other girls he won't, but you make up an excuse of why he won't, he can't have to do it. But he just wants yeah. to keep it, he just wants to keep it around just in case. That's yeah. that's that's modern that's casual dating today. That's modern day dating today of casual. People have multiple mm-hmm. options. Because you know, most yeah. people, no one's really talking to one person no more. Yeah. So everybody has their options. Like they're talking to multiple people. And then they'll have they'll they'll pursue the they'll give limited attention and time to the the bottom, the the ones that he's not really interested in, but he'll give most of his time and energy and physical uh and physical attention to the ones he likes the most. So it just sounds like it just sounds like the, yeah he like he if he always, if he's having sex with those girls then he care he cared more about them than mm-hmm. um uh than you yeah he wasn't he did he didn't show any red flags like that that whole year you guys were dating he didn't show any red flags no it was honestly like weird like I thought everything was going great and then yeah it, it you, just happened I was like okay how did you know that uh did you know he was sleeping with other girls during the, during the relationship or after? Um, I had I had messages from a couple friends that were related to the girl, and they they were like, "Oh yeah, you shouldn't trust them." And I was like, "Okay." So I I confronted him about it, and he gave pretty like good excuses. What do you say? Like, uh, he said that um they were just hanging out and stuff, and he's known the family for ages. And I was like, "Oh, okay." He said they were like family friends, like like close to being cousins kind of thing. Oh, and yeah. I was like, oh yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. So I didn't think anything of it. And then um that's when that girl told me that yeah, they have been having sex. And I was like, okay. And then the relationship ended there. Oh, okay. So as soon as you as soon as you found out that he was having sex and that then you did you confront him about it? Yeah. And then, and uh, what did he say? He finally told the truth, and I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I just ended it there. Yeah. Well, and then uh, was it the? How did you guys meet? Was it he found you or you found him? Um, he found me. Yeah, he found me on um social media, and I was like, "Oh, okay." But we we actually met like a few years back in school, oh, but in school, we've okay. just never spoken. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. It just sounds like that he was just, uh, he was using you, and you were just like a, you know, a, another girl, and that he t- multiple of the multiple girls he was talking to, because he was doing yeah. that. Yeah, he was doing that to you. Best believe he was doing it to other girls as well. Doing it to other girls, yeah. And then, and then when you have multiple options, then you then you only give your most attention and sex to the ones you like the most, and then the other ones, you just give mm. them limited limited time just to keep them around. Yeah. Damn, it's hard on those streets, y'all. It's hard. <laughs> the For game, real. yo, the game, the game is messed up. <laughs> Would be yo. better if you was gay, but okay. <laughs> Damn, then, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, is he in a relationship? I mean, is he in a relationship now with another girl, or? Oh, I don't know. I blocked him like that same day. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. I know it's tough. Like, yeah, that's that's one of the things. Like. I, I always tell a lot of uh, women and guys out there, like, you have to assume everybody's talking to multiple people if you mm-hmm. want to protect yourself. But um, that's why it's, I think it's, uh, I think, it, let me ask you when you meet, when you meet, when you meet guys, like, do you tell them up front in the beginning, like, hey, I'm looking for commitment. I'm not, I'm not, I'm looking, no, I'm not doing this casual, multi, like, you know, relationship. I'm looking for like a long term committed relationship. Um, not really, because when I, when I first meet a guy, half of the time it's like just a friendship kind of thing. Like, oh yeah, I just want to be friends. Like, let's hang out and all that stuff. And then um, towards like if if I'm starting to like feel like if they're gonna be like a really good friend to me, then obviously they'll be like a good partner wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what I look for. 
because like if if I go jumping straight into oh yeah I'm looking for this kind of guy I want him to like be loyal blah 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 like in in my head I'm like nah he's probably gonna get bored or something like that yeah so um <laughs> so when you when you were with him for that the whole year did you ever talk about like long-term plans yeah or, like like we're gonna be committed like did you ever bring that up yeah. What did, what did um, say? We we've always um spoken about um our ideals of marriage and stuff, mm-hmm. but I, I I personally thought it was a bit too fast because like it was only like a year, and um we he said that he didn't want to get married, but he did want me to move in and all that stuff, and I was like, nah, because being yeah. in a poly house. If you move in with your boyfriend and <laughs> and you're not married, obviously yeah, your mom and bad. dad's gonna think otherwise. You're, you like, know what your, dad, yeah. you know what your dad's gonna do? He's gonna go to the closet get the Yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, my dad would have oh hell no. Yeah, but yeah, that that was um one of the like the main things that he was always talking about, like, oh yeah, you should move out with me. And I was like nah <laughs> I can't like I really can't um but other than that he said he didn't want marriage um he he was always talking about like no no religion and stuff and being being in a Samoan household like God and religion is is a very big thing in our culture so I didn't think like uh maybe maybe he'll come around or something like that but he never did so it wasn't you're, really because because you're um are you are you a religious person right like yeah you okay yeah no no that's uh, let me ask you after experiencing that like what what do you do differently now I mean what do you do diff- when you meet men today what do you do differently to make sure that that uh you that you can get commitment from him and he's not wasting your time like the men before what do you do differently now um differently right now. Cause I'm currently in one, yeah. so I I just um I I sit and observe like I I don't want I I tell them well I told him that I don't catch feelings and um <laughs> and but in the end I was the one who caught feelings so <laughs> so um I I tell I told him not to catch feelings but um deep down I I didn't know because I was, I was a bit scared. Because mm-hmm. I got two kids and yeah. I, I don't want people wasting my time because like my my time is really involved around the kids. So if I include someone else into the whole mixture and stuff, then it's going to be like a whole, it's going to be a lot of work. But yeah, um, I, I I just like, at first I figure out their vibe, if, if they're good, if they're a good man, like if they're going to treat their mom well, they, they're going to treat me well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I I look towards like their honesty. Like if they're very honest about their past, then I can figure them out even more. Like like if if you were if you're like hang like talking to multiple girls in the past and stuff. Like I want to know. Like like just so if if it happens again, then I'll be like, oh yep, okay. Mm-hmm. Or or if it's still happening and stuff, but. Yeah, other other than that, I always look towards like their honesty, especially their honesty, because I've always been lied to, like through mo- like my past relationships. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I think well, I think for me personally, like just l- watching, observing people, I think one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people do is we don't we don't uh, we don't tell people our intentions and what we want out of the relationship, mm. so we so we can set a foundation, right? So a lot of so this is what most people do, and I used to do it before. It's just we just date, and then hopefully, hopefully something works. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like, maybe I don't say what I really want. They don't say what I really want. I mean, we're just hoping that it, uh, it, go, it goes from potential into something, uh, into a real relationship. And yeah. I think I think it's really really important. Uh, so is to tell like if you like if you're looking for something serious and committed, I think it is it is important to like hey when you when you, of course once you're done with the talking stage and, and you guys finally meet up. Yeah, I think it's important to tell them, hey, you know, uh, I'm looking for something long term. I'm looking for um, a commitment. I'm not here to waste mm-hmm. time. 
Um, I'm not. Yeah. Talking, I'm not. I'm not here to do multi. I don't do the multiple thing, multiple people thing. So if yeah. you're talking, if you're talking to multiple girls, drop them. You gotta drop them. If we're gonna, if this is yeah. gonna continue, if this is gonna continue, right? So I think it's important for women to to tell them everything that you want in the relationship, and of course yeah. he'd be able he'd be able to he'd be able to explain that back to you. But a lot of times I do notice like a lot of girls they don't they don't they don't tell him what he wants. And the thing is, if you don't tell him what he wants, then he opens it up for him to manipulate you. If that makes uh, sense. Yeah. Right. Because he can just yeah. he can just tell you whatever you want to hear to keep you around. But a lot of girls, I was like, yeah, tell him what you want. And then some of the girls are like, what if he leaves? Okay, on to the next. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I think it's I think for a lot of girls it's hard because you finally met a guy you like. But it's just you, a lot of girls are afraid of like getting their uh, rejecting and you know, getting rejected mm. with that guy. And I tell girls, no, tell him what he wants. And if I always tell girls, like, if the guy really likes you and vibes with you and is committed to you and he's looking for the same thing, if you tell him you're looking for commitment, he was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be hell excited. He was like, yeah. oh, for sure. But you're looking for commitment. I'm looking for commitment. Great. Yeah. It's not gonna scare him. And if it does scare him, that means his attention is different. He was looking for you for a different purpose. Yeah. So, so if he's scared of you and walks away, then he then that tells you all oh, he was just, he was just, you know he had a year that uh, he was using me for a different thing. Mm. So for me, like I like it when I when I when I go on a, uh, when I meet when I date women today, I tell them my intentions, and I like that, and I and I ask him like, what what's your intentions? And I want them to tell me because I want to know because I'm not gonna I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna spend like a, a year just figuring out like waiting <laughs> the whole year yeah. actually, here's a long time you know <laughs> that's a long yeah. that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a year you will never get back mm. so like what do you what are your thoughts about that what do you think about speaking like telling them in the beginning like what do you what, what do you think about that? um i feel like it's good good in some cases well for me for me um speaking up about stuff i'm very closed up until i really get to know them yeah I, I don't tell them like straight away only because like I'm scared that they might not have the same intentions or yeah uh, or, like it could it could end in an argument or something like that like I try to avoid arguments that, like at all costs so yeah but but there's a thing like uh that's all I would say women like the guy really likes you he'll find he'll find a way to make it work yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, like you, you, you know this. Like, I'm sure you've seen it. You, I'm sure you've done it before. Like, where you've you've yeah. been with the guy, you've been with a guy you really, really mm-hmm. like, and no matter how mm-hmm. things went, you, you you figured out how to like yeah, to fix yeah, it. trying to make you it. it. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Like, even though it sucked, like, like oh, shit, we're arguing, but because you really wanted to work, you you figured out a way. And the same thing for men. And I tell girls all the mm-hmm. time, like, if he really likes you and you really committed to you. You, yeah. Even if you, even if you say something that he may disagree with or or whatever, like he'll figure out a way because that's mm. what happens when a guy really really committed to you. But if it, if he's not willing to fight for you, then, then that, that just shows you oh like it wasn't serious, it wasn't serious. But the but the hardest thing is walking away, right? That's yeah. the hardest thing. Like walk away. Like if it doesn't work out, then you'd be able to walk away from the situation. And for a lot of girls, it's like it's hard for them to walk away, especially from a guy that you really like. And then go keep and go back into the dating world and try to find another person. <laughs> yeah, you know, but that's the thing. Go ahead. You want something to say? Pardon? Oh no, yeah, I thought, I thought you, you want something to say. You want to say something? Nah, no, nah, I'm. I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to your advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm telling you. No, nah, I think this is a, a conversation like. Uh, yeah, I, I have this conversation all the time with a lot of girls too, especially the Pacific Island girls, because we don't have these conversations with our families. Mm. You know, to ask about boys. Yeah. <laughs> um, you... <laughs> yeah, for us, we we barely talk about boys because, um, it it was it was very not allowed. We weren't allowed to talk about it, and if we did, we obviously we'll get a hiding from our parents. But yeah, we we weren't very um educated on like what kind of guys and stuff we're just told okay like you're gonna grow up you're gonna you're gonna learn how to cook you're gonna learn how to clean so when you have a husband you know how to do it right and all that stuff but we weren't really taught like the whole how to get a husband or what kind of like husbands to get 
Yeah, it's just, yeah. I, 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 yeah, because social media changed everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because now, like, guys are, uh, because, like, tradition, like, the Polynesian girls are cooking clean. That, you know, those are the mm. type of women that, those are the type of women that uh, men will love to marry and wife up. The problem mm. today is just the, the society is pushing casual sex. Yeah. Guys are like, yo, you know what? I'm uh, that girl that I really want to pursue. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait off on her, and I'm, let me go fuck these other bitches, and then yeah. And then, and the, and the and the and the fucked up thing about the good girls is that the good girls, these guys are not coming to them. So a lot of these good girls think that something's wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. I've I've had a lot of experiences about that with guys telling me, oh yeah, like you're beautiful and all that stuff, and then goes and cheats, and then like in my head I'm like okay but they, but it's it's the worst it's the worst feeling especially like when when they say oh yeah you're so beautiful like you're very gorgeous and all that stuff and then they go and cheat with someone yeah i don't want to be sad i don't want to be sad but they go and cheat with someone who's ugly <laughs> and then you sit there and, <laughs> and, you have to sit there and you're wondering ah oh, like like come on <laughs> wondering like oh so how are you gonna call me beautiful but you go and cheat with them like come on like yeah it's yeah, sad yeah, but... i know that, that yeah i mean that's the thing that's the culture today is like they're pushing guys right to have sex and that's the norm right yeah so guys are like all right shoot i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna see all these pretty girls on social medias i'm gonna go have sex but then they'll, they'll hold off on the, on the good girl and then, yeah, and this is something I was to tell good girls like, look, like, don't hold, like, like, stay strong, because those guys, yeah. the guys will come back. Well, no, 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 fuck those guys. They wasted your time. But the good men, the the guys that are looking for commitment, are looking for you. Mm. So once he finds it, you, you know, you get to go. But a lot of times, what happens is the good girls, you start questioning themselves because you're seeing all these guys smashing all these yeah. ugly chicks, ugly chicks. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and they really be questioning themselves afterwards because they're like, "What the yeah, heck?" Yeah. yeah, exactly. So then, 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 you know, you know, I'm fuck this good girl shit. I'm about to go. Try, I'm about to go into this. Yeah, bad, bad girl shit. But then the bad girl shit. So, yeah, I'm going coming either. now. <laughs> <laughs> Whole season. Hot <laughs> <laughs> girl summer. Hot girl summer. But that thing that that doesn't even work either. You know, yeah. that doesn't work either too. So that's why I was saying to all the good girls out there, you gotta you gotta stay strong. <laughs> Because mm. the, the, the problem, I'm telling you, the good men are out there, but the thing is, they're, they're trying to find you among all these other holes out here. So they're trying to. <laughs> they're, 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 <laughs> they're swimming now. <laughs> they're trying to, like, you know, you know cast, like, where, like, where, where are the good girls at? So that, yeah. that's a, I've heard that so many times with a lot of girls. Like, they, they, like, I think we talked about earlier in the beginning of the podcast, like, they start doing things that they don't want to do, right? Mm. Uh, or become like everybody else, even though. In their heart, they don't. They don't, they don't want. They want to be just be with one person. But yeah, so that's a, yeah, that's the hardest thing of uh, the, being a good girl today is just being a good girl and seeing all these guys pursue all these you know uh, you know these uh, uh, ratchet you know ratchet girls or whatever uh, uh, you know. But then you're like you start questioning yourself. So uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts, everybody. What what you guys thought about it, and. <laughs> And uh, yeah, for all the ugly girls out there, yeah, yeah hey, um, oh, um, nah. <laughs> hey, yeah, if you're ugly, you're ugly. All right, it's all good. Much to have, to have love for you. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, yeah, we've come to the end of the the podcast. Uh, maybe one thing, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for jumping on, and thank you for being on the podcast. It was kind of fun. Also, the shout out to you, if you're watching this, shout out to you for jumping on and sharing. Uh, your thoughts and everything it was kind of cool. <laughs> I was I was I was dying. We, I was, we were trying to explain to her like, yeah, because islanders we don't get that type of love. <laughs> uh, for real? I'm like, oh, um. Nah, wait, wait, that was brought up. I was like, nah, sis, it doesn't work like that in our household. <laughs> nah, nah, it's just that tough love. That tough love. Yeah. Oh, let me ask you. Do you like you know before we finish this? Um. Yeah. It, do you, when it comes to the men that you look for, are you looking for like a, a tough love type of man, or like, or if you meet a guy that's, say, if you meet a Pacific Islander guy, but that's like that's like new, very open with his emotions, and mm. do you define that attractive, or you you're attracted to the tough love, the, the more masculine? I, I'm I'm attracted to 
the straight up like tell me oh. like oh it's yeah. the tough love the tough love all right yeah okay so if you meet a guy that's like not tough love but he's like i feel like he likes to talk about feelings like you know that's not as that's not as <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I, I'm still attracted, but like, like, um, yeah, I, I like a tough love kind of guy, but I want him to also like, um, mix it a little bit. Like, give me some of that sugar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the like, softness. Be sweet to me. <laughs> be, you, you want the hard and the soft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you want the both. Like, be hard on me, but also give me that softness. You don't yeah. Wanna, you don't want, he doesn't want to be, he can't be, can't be too soft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got you got you but yeah uh yeah uh yeah we come to the end of the podcast let me ask you people uh one thing i always ask every single guest uh what do you what do you th- uh, what did you take away from th- tonight's podcast what did what you think i i thought this was actually pretty good and, and very like um like the advice that was coming out of it was pretty good i f- like i could i would literally be talking about this for the next week now to my sister though i'll be educating my little sister because she's in she's in high school and she's like she's got her first boyfriend yeah. so like I, now like with my experiences and now with your experiences and N- nila's like experiences i'm i'm good to go like I, i've learned i've learned a whole bunch of things like from loving myself mm-hmm. like instead of like always always trying to impress a man oh yeah yeah Mm-hmm. And like like I like I said, you're a you know you're a uh, you're an attractive girl, like you're like a beautiful girl. So like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm gonna keep it one hundred. <laughs> but since the best thing you're pretty is just like all you gotta do is just make uh, do the right things, right? Do the right things mm-hmm. to attract the right man. And that's the yeah. thing, like you know you, cause some girls out there, you know, some girls out there are ugly. But I'm just keeping one hundred, so you have to work harder. But you want you think you got the you're already good looking yourself, so all you gotta do is just make the right choices for yourself, and mm. you'll be able to attract the uh, 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 the good guys out there. So you know, um, so that's the thing. You know, I always tell my uh, my uh, my ugly friends, hey, because you're ugly, you have to do a lot more work. <laughs> <laughs> <That's dirty. laughs> I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm like, like I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying you have to put a lot of work in. You yeah. know because you know it is what it is but you know you're, you're you're still young you're attractive girl um all you gotta do is just like i said just i just don't you know, understand men so you don't waste your time mm-hmm. with the wrong men you know yeah and uh and also just like i said just be a good be a, like i said be a good woman and uh and then and then i'm telling you it's gonna take time but you're gonna find a good man and uh, out there and then you're gonna have a good life i, I, I hopefully uh somebody people have these multiple more conversations like this especially in, in our community but anyways, yeah. uh, thank you so much. Everybody that's watching this right now, thank you so much for watching live. Let me know your comments below. Um, much love for you guys that are watching. Drop a comment below. I know maybe there was a lot of guys on the comments that wanted to shout you out for shooting the shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so Maple, how do uh, if anybody wants to find you? How do they find you? Um, on Instagram, Maple underscore Leota, or on TikTok, the same thing. <laughs> 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 all right so uh yeah if you guys want to support uh mabel want to follow her definitely support her and uh everything she's doing uh, thank you so much for jumping on and supporting me um but yeah if you have any questions uh don't forget guys we do this every single saturday we have these conversations so thank you for watching and dropping on for this live show and i'll see you guys next saturday 